So, Daryl, we're going Hello. to talk about advanced 3D brackets design and production yeah. so that you guys have a better understanding of the module and it will inform your module choices better. So, um, if we can start off, uh, if you could just describe the module in one sentence. Um, it's what it says on the tin, essentially. It's a, it's a nicely named module for a change. So, it is anything that you can do in 3D that is advanced. It is largely research focused. In, in, in by research, I mean you formulate a project and um, you go off and learn how to solve the problems for yourself with some support from me. Cool. And it, uh, almost anything? Um, as long as it's got a 3D component, yeah, absolutely anything. Uh, as long as you can argue to me that your project has some 3, 3D basis, then absolutely. So we don't tend to do UI design, we don't tend to do 2D work, no. but if you, but I will allow um, things as, as far uh, out in left field as the VFX project, things of that nature, um, using sort of like either engine stuff, but I've also, we've done particle effects in engine, but we've also done in the past um, composited effects for film. For instance, the students that no longer want to specify that they want to work in games. Cool. I was just thinking about because I chatted to Matt about Advanced Viz the other day. So if somebody's picked it, picking Advanced Viz and Advanced Three D, what's from your point of view? What's the big difference? I think what's the big difference? difference is the two D top cover. Matt, Matt's module contains the, the scope to do all kinds of two D projects. Um, I think we're a subset of Matt's module. There's, there's nothing we would do in, in, in Advanced 3D that couldn't be done in Advanced Visual Design. The difference is the approach to the module and the way that the module works and the expected outcomes at the back end of that, which I can talk about now unless you've got a specific Yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the way that the module works from beginning to end is that you, um, you pitch your idea, your concept of what you want to do. I've been teaching this module for a very long time probably um, probably 13 or 14 years now. So what, what I'd usually ask students to do is I give them a pro forma document, just a sheet of A4 essentially, put in that a couple of concept images, maybe even only one concept image, um, tell me the art style in which you want to make that work. So that can be as simple as just taking an image from an existing, say, AAA game that you want to work in the art style of, and then say, I'm going to make this in this art style. And it really can be that simple. You can elaborate on that as much as you like. You can have an entire asset list if you really want to go to town, but I don't need that yeah. to understand what you're trying to create. Um, and as long as I look at that and just eyeball it and go, well, that's, that's doable within the scope of a 20 credit module. It should take you know roughly X number of hours to produce that at your skill level, and we should be able to get that polished and looking professional. Then I'm quite happy to sign those forms off. And they are literally a signed form. I get the students to print out that that proposal mm -hmm. and we both sign it as a contract so we can go back to it later and go well you propose that you're going to do this and it just means they're sort of like they know what they've got to do in a, in a, in a very tight way and if they want to deviate from that then they have to come back and negotiate that that deviation cool um, it, it's, it's worked I mean it's worked for many 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 years yeah, it's just yeah. a really solid way of working yeah well, that sounds cool so uh, the next one would be who's it for I think it's for anybody that's got um, a hope to work in some 3D capacity in industry or just is just interested in it. Um, a lot of our students obviously are hoping to graduate and go into a role in production in, in some capacity, whether that's 3D uh, environment art, character arts, animation, um, VFX, any of that stuff, including the stuff I talked about mm. previously, which is like, you know, effects for movies and, and yeah. that sort of thing we've done we've had we've had graduates go out and do um you know they they concentrate strictly on animation and then go out of this course which is not an animation course but into a role as an animator in a studio um so it's very very broad cool sounds good um well the next question is what's a typical session like which you've kind of answered about the that initial concept uh, yeah, agreement phase. So after that, yeah, what's yeah, the typical yeah. session? I, like? I, I don't tend to do a lot. Again, I don't tend to do a lot of standing at the front doing lectures and things of that nature. Uh, I kind of have a quite a fluid approach to the sort of tuition from the front of the room, if you like. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. It, you know, quite frequently a lecturer will go right. We're going to do the lecture part, and then we'll then we'll get into the sort of me mm -hmm. going around looking at the work. I'm, I'm far more flexible than that. Sometimes I'll go in and sort of like say hi, how's everyone getting on? And then something will come up in conversation and we'll start discussing it. And then I almost create a lecture on the fly in the middle of the session. Yeah. Um, but usually that's, that's sort of, you know, talking about things in, in very general terms. Because the module's so broad, 
you really wouldn't want to go in and then say, okay, guys, this week we're doing visual effects in Unreal Engine. Yeah. Um, what we what we, what I tend to do is try to devise learning sets. So if, if there's three or four students that are interested in VFX, I'll try and convince them to sit together in a session. Similarly, environment artists, character artists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and even if they don't sit together on a week by week basis, then sometimes we'll just get together and have a chat. Cool. Uh, collectively because those chats don't usually require everyone to pay attention to them and sometimes you know you, the, the difference between student a and student b can be so far apart that you don't want to try to make everyone think about the same thing simultaneously so that just it's a very flexible approach cool. most of my time is getting my hands dirty if you like just going to each student in turn looking at what they're what they're working on um, if it's a sculptural project, then sort of like you know, doing some ZBrush work with them, sort of like you know, taking their model and adjusting it and saying, "Have you considered looking like this?" Sometimes it can be as simple as just saying, "Have you seen this tutorial?" Your approach is not quite sort of like you know, the the standard we we expect nowadays, or the sort of like the, the methodology we expect nowadays. And maybe things have moved on since you were taught in second year. I mean, you know, students on placement particularly yeah, true, have that true, issue. Yeah. Yeah. So it's this is a cutting edge tutorial. That will massively improve the look of your work and then frequently at the back end of the module it's a lot about presentation polish and lighting and things of that nature and it's not so much about creating things in 3d it's making them look amazing yeah, that's key isn't it? once yeah. you've got once and the, you've got the, the model, model yeah the module's yeah. about creating a portfolio i mean far more than matt's matt's got this this the different focus he's quite concentrating on the um the report at the back end of it and the mm. methodology and the, the approach and my my the way I look at that is slightly inverted. I'm far more interested in is what you're doing on a week by week basis going to give you the foundational chunk of a portfolio? Uh, and I've, I've got a few examples of portfolio yeah. work if you want to. Actually, yeah, let's do let's look at examples now. I think that'd be that would be okay. useful. Yeah, we yeah. can do that. So because uh, um, the last the I've last question, up, maybe, yeah, I've pulled up so. four or five um, portfolio examples. Um, this is. Uh, Sam Sharp's work that he did for me, uh, sort of Blade Runner esque neon um, dark city scape. Yeah. Um, not that I can click on it, but we'll move on. Even this is live. Um, this is Harry Kay's. Um, this is Harry Kay's environment of um, a, a throne room, a Viking throne room. Mm -hmm. um, you see, hopefully the sort of pig roasting there. We've got. Uh, Makes me hungry. <laughs> Got the nice throne and the, um, you know, the tree motif that's common throughout the sort of like mythology. While we're looking at the examples, the the followed the last question is about assessment. So if we might as well merge the two, if you talk about how, what would be assessed in this then? So what what would you be? Looking it's at? a combination. It's 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 the methodology that they've used. It's process. It's it's topology, control of textures, UV layouts, quality of lighting, as you can see in this particular yeah. image. Um, you know, reusable assets where appropriate. So, you know, modular building workflow, all that sort of stuff. Overall aesthetic presentation. It's it's a complex it's a complex thing to grade. So, um, you know, again, that, that that forms part of that discussion that we have with every single student individually. Because obviously, the grading of a project of this nature, which is a, a large number of assets brought together in a in a very compelling way. Mm. Contrasted with um, a, a, a piece of piece of work that would just be a you know, a series of particle effects, or in some cases, um, a handful of animations that have been brought together. That's, you've got you've got to have a flexible approach to the grading because they're not even remotely similar on yeah, paper. True, but true. You, you you need to you need to discuss that with the student, and, and I think for the most part they understand the challenge and they rise to that challenge on a on a yearly basis. Yeah. Well, then what's next? Um, so yeah, so we we do more advanced character work again. Um, Jack concentrated on characters for every module um, during his final year. This is just one that he produced for my module. Um, uh, so yeah, he's he's done a remarkable job on this. And again, just just demonstrating process, showing off that um, understanding of how to lay out um, your your UVs effectively, what the you know what those texture sheets are actually doing, what they're driving. And again, I think the one one major thing that you see in this in particular is fantastic use of topology. Um, and it just comes together in a you know really sort of effective portfolio piece. Cool. That's a really nice render there as well. Um, this Max Zazulak, um graduated a couple of years ago. Max won, um, and actually I should probably say about this about um, Sam Sharp and uh, and uh, Jack Walker. Again, they've they, you know they've won prizes for the work for their work. And Jack Walker won 
um, the uh, so Game, Game Republic oh, Game, right. Game Republic Student Showcase Award for Best Artist. Cool. Um, yeah, and Max again. Um, this is his Search for a Star um, character, and he, he won the uh, Search for a Star character prize Lovely. with this piece of work. And again, it's it's the same thing. You know, really, just showing off not just the final version but showing you working I mean, this is what someone in the industry wants to see yeah they don't just want to see the final piece because that could be done in a you know in a million different ways that are wrong and there's kind of one right way to do it and this this just demonstrates that you understand the mapping process you understand the unwrap process you know and you, you've you're very very good at understanding you know the technical ins and outs of this and you get topology you know cool. so getting a really good example of that we just, let's uh, uh, look at one more and then we'll... Yeah, fine. Yeah, this is um, Alex Brown's work for, for me. Um, and yes, it's just a big gun. But it's a very nice big gun. Um, <laughs> a lot lot of detail. Um, beautiful use of colour, light. Um, the attention to detail in the sort of like the, the sort of extraneous props is fantastic as well. And again, just sort of showing off the, the whole process, showing the working, um, as you can see here. And with all the modular assets that have been used, the topology, the use of UVs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, this is kind of what I'm, I'm after. It's that starting point for a portfolio that you can build on post graduation. I don't. Mix, I mean, Alex Brown was a. In fact, a lot of these, to be honest. Um, Sam Sharp, um, Harry Kay, um, Max Zazulak, and Alex Brown all had jobs to go to. As soon as they graduated, based upon the stuff that we did in these modules. Cool. It's not just my module; it's Matt's module as well. But yeah. that's your portfolio right there, and it has led to a lot of employment. Before we finish up, uh, how is the assessment during the year? So, is it uh, is it one final piece at the end? Yes, it is. It's hundred percent. With formatives the as they yeah, go. Lots and lots of formative feedback. Okay, and then I would say roughly when do they submit? But obviously, at the end of the year, yeah. and we've done the examples. Yep. So, I think hopefully. For you guys, uh, that will prove useful in terms of um, uh, making a choice for your module choices. Cool. Thank you, Thank you very much.